This the first week of February. Jamaica's Reggae Month has been a very eventful one. Birthday celebrations for the king. Blue plaque installation and concert launch for Gregory. And the Bounty Killer makes his most important charitable contribution ever. This is just a little finger of the things that we want to do. We will have stories on all, including one-on-ones with two icons of reggae. And for those getting ready for Valentine's celebrations, a very, very special treat comes your way. Right here on our stage, live. You don't want to miss that. All coming up. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winford Williams. We'll be right back. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. On the birthday of the reggae king Bob Marley, the warlord bounty killer made his most important contribution ever to the institution that saved his life. That's what I've said, the plan must be led, the hunger must be fed. He was born at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital and his life saved at 16 years old at Sister Hospital KPH. And now, on the birthday of Bob Marley, he has given back to the tune of 63 much needed beds. This is just a little finger of the things that we want to do, but you know, we have to take what time. This has come at a very opportune time for us because we were able to immediately um, press into service these 63 beds and replace some of the older, non-functioning ones. Rodney Price, a.k.a. Bounty Killer. Yeah, man, it's a nice feeling. It's joyful. And goodness does lead to great and good feeling. And this is something good. And then you see the response from the hospital and the minister. The fact that the minister came, that does put the stamp of approval on it, as you see him in Parliament, the man then, and taking time out. So you see that is a good initiative good gesture. It's a significant contribution. This hospital is a very large Taipei hospital, over 450, I think 470 beds. Um, at any point in time, there are more takers from beds that are available. We're always looking to improve and to expand capacity and to the extent that uh, Bounty Foundation has come in and, and, and filled a gap. It's an important gap and I think it will make the environment a lot more conducive in terms of treatment. This is a tremendous occasion on which Bonticilla has decided to donate 63 beds to the KPH and the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Already 25 have been put in use over by Victoria Jubilee Hospital. So it is a momentous occasion and I know it will lead the way for many other entertainers, many other corporate entities, and those the regular Jamaican citizen to contribute to building our country. The donation made by Mr. Price is really significant. We have financing healthcare is a difficult problem, and even in the first world countries, it's common practice for concerned private citizens to take part, and that's a re something we want to encourage in Jamaica. The Kingston Public Hospital and the Victoria Jubilee hospitals are the final referral centers not just for Jamaica but for the English-speaking Caribbean and Jamaicans who live in the diaspora. I owe it to the public hospital as the hospital who took care of me when I got shot as a boy. And the whole, yes, the yeah. whole thing is augmented by that, that it delivered you to the world and then it... And it's been doing it a could, great job. could be credited for saving your life 16 yeah. years Yeah, that's what I think they saved my life because it was a serious wound I got. It was on a leg wound. Save your lungs. Which yeah, you save my lungs. And I have no complication, never. And you traded your voice. voice yeah. Is, yeah. So them are my little angel them. And you're calling out for more to do this? Uh, yeah, man. More should do it, man, because this alone now got gone away. We should pull together. We as Jamaican, we're not talking now entertainers or music insiders. We are talking Jamaicans. Because everybody make it seem like you have to be a star, you have to be a rich person to help or to give. If you can give a dollar or you can give a word of encouragement, any good thing is a good deed. Mm -hmm. So we just want people to have these things in mind. Help who you can, help when you can. Don't go out of the way, but if you can stretch a finger or a dollar, 
do it. On Monday, the British High Commissioner to Jamaica, Asif Ahmed, installed a blue plaque at the home of Gregory Isaacs in recognition of the cool ruler's contribution to arts and culture. I get work up and they get work up. Then on Tuesday, birthday celebrations for the king. At the museum. And for those of you celebrating Valentine, Appleton has just the event for you. As the brand kicks off its third season of its popular Appleton Signature Nights series with the likes of Barry's Harmon. The way you make me feel from deep down in my soul. Marcia Griffiths. You're looking too hot, so. And Chris Martin. Martin, baby. At Woodstock, Negril. And don't forget the Valentine's celebrations. Begin right here on stage, live. A very, very special treat for you and your Valentine. And also coming up, two icons of reggae. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week on stage. So much more than entertainment. As mentioned in our previous segment, a blue plaque was installed at the home of Gregory Isaacs uh -huh. by the British government on Monday in recognition of the cool ruler's contribution to arts and culture. Meet me at the corner. And come Valentine's Day, more celebration of the life and work of the cool ruler with the second installment of Red Rose for Gregory. Here to talk about all this and more, Gregory Isaac's former manager and friend, Copeland Forbes. Right now, right here at our stage. Mr. Forbes. Muchas gracias. Blessed love, sir. Welcome. Your thoughts on this, this, this plaque for Gregory? Um, I tell you, it was um, a very, very, very touching occasion, you know, to stand there and see um, the British High Commissioner to Jamaica um, unveiling the plaque at his home because uh, one has been unveiled in England at the house where he was when he passed away two years ago. So the British government said, listen, Gregory does not belong to just Jamaica, although he belongs to us, you know. So, As well. Yeah, as well, you know, I mean, so he said he wanted to um, come and make, unveil the plaque there. So the plaque has been put up at the house where he lived at 15 a Sunrise Crescent. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the High Commissioner made a very, very good speech about the state of our music. And he used Gregory's song as a tailgate to say songs that he grew up on when he was a kid coming up, you know. And I felt proud that the High Commissioner of, of, of the UK grew up on our music and he talked about the music 10 and he compared it to some of the music coming out now and said listen the music i hear nowadays some of them have no place in my country okay. you know and he touched everybody heart who was there and i think it was a very significant um moment for me and i, I felt very proud that i was associated and with the attendees at the ceremony yes were in agreement with it yeah why well, i say this is this those of you who make a living out of singing songs that attack women have no place in Britain. There will not be a blue card for them. Yes, you got to stand in ovation because uh, a lot of the Jaria people, because it's part of the, the, the reggae month activity, mm -hmm. you know. So um, Ibu and had led the Jaria people who organized everything. And it was very well, a very touching occasion for me, you know. That is what we, those in music should remember that the world is on to reggae because it's, it's founded on love, one love. Mm -hmm. Recently I was in Australia, you know, speaking at a seminar, you know, and the first thing people come up to me and said, where's the love in the music coming out of Jamaica? Where's the love that Bob left you all? Yes. And I feel bad when I, I hear all these people from different nationalities from around the world, 
saying the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I look back and I said, you know something, you know, we really have to look back into ourselves and see why we're not making music for ourselves now, you know. It's for the world, because the world is focusing on us now, you yes. know what I mean? And, and um, they should, I, I, I'm inviting the young artists, and they're very talented young men and women in music, to go and look at what we mean by one love, the music being founded on the, the concept of one love. Because mm -hmm. we're not talking about romantic love here only. We're exactly. talking about love of mankind, love of self, celebrate life, preserve life. And if we do more of that in Jamaica, I believe that crime will go down. Yeah, of course. Because that is forgotten. When reggae was the, the mainstream, less crime was there in True. Jamaica. So some people better know this, that we're not blaming any, any genre or anything. But what we're saying is we were a calm nation. We were bigger believers in the principles of one love, that regardless of your creed, your race, your social class, you deserve love and you get love well you and know my first tour that you was on yes. what's the name of it one love and we did what, three or three or four of them together you know and the theme stood out because i remember i had represented from every genre of the music from skakum right up to instrumental you know and it was a great moment everybody's known for something and jamaica is known for that exactly and if young people want to squander it or present day politicians and the rest of them who are running this country want to squander the one love that has set us apart in the global space right. and, and 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 brought us into this unbelievable prominence in in global music generations to come will hold all of us who exist now responsible right your comments on the week, the Reggae Month week. This week is a big week for yes, the celebration of Reggae, reggae Month. Um, we're off to a great start with the, the king being celebrated, the, Gregory, the laying of the Gregory plaque. On Tuesday, the warlord on the birthday of the king gave, made his most important contribution ever. Your take on that. Oh, Terry, when I saw it, I was so moved. And I said to myself, you know, sometimes we just overlook things and realize it's a bounty killer. He has done so much for the music and for this country, yeah. even before the donating the bed. Because if you look at artists that he has brought together mm -hmm. and groomed and put out, and who they groomed and put out, it's a trail of them. And I think he should be up for a national award. Because he has done more than what that some of them that I say. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I sit down and when I saw that, I felt proud, you know, and coming home for reggae month and stopping in the different countries and people see because you know everything go viral in no time, you know what I mean? Um, everybody talk about it. I was so proud as a Jamaican, you know, to know that people are recognizing somebody that represents dance all who get a lot of bashing sometimes. Okay. You know, and to say that yes, we have somebody with that kind of art. And more of them to come. And then uh, tomorrow, IRFM will be honoring the great, legendary Bonnie Whaler. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is going to be something, too, because they have asked me to, to do a five-minute talk on him. Because we went to school together, you know, mm -hmm. right, and grew up. And I know said, that, yes. They said I know him more than anybody else and thing. And I think it's a great moment. Of so you will be reflecting on those early years of the... Yeah, just in five minutes, you know, because it's going to take too long, as you know. But um, it's so a what was he like as a boy? As a boy, if I tell you something, you troublemaker, see, good guy, right? No, 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 he, no was he was a not troublemaker. Fantastic dancer, I'm told. Yeah, he wasn't a troublemaker. He was the neatest man in school. Oh, right, neat. And he was a dancer. Yeah, first. And, yeah, and he was the only man. Mm. And that's why he come from a rich family. He was the only man could afford to buy him father buy him a, the most expensive bicycle. Teachers couldn't afford bicycle to ride him off a tech bus, and Neville was riding to school. And everything come to school. Him give everybody 10 shillings and a pound, mm -hmm. you know. So we grew up from Chatula Park into all scenes. So everybody wanted to, to be his, his friend. His friend, yeah, man, because him give, he, him yeah. give you money. And <laughs> him, him could have fight though, you know, because I'm used to wear a three-quarter boot. And when him get two kick, you, you turn home. I used to watch movies and know yeah. all them things and so on. So anybody come to you, say, Carl Neville. But so, so he could dance better than you? Because well, you no, pride yourself no, as a big dancer. No, no, no. no. I could have danced better than him in school, but I never knew him could have sing. I know, I know Neville Livingston and I know Bonnie Wheeler. Yes. 
You say the two, the two. So the living stand couldn't dance better than you. No man, I was the biggest, best dancer in the school, man. And he'll kill them with legs. Cause and I couldn't sing. What's the name of the school again? Shetula Park. Shetula Park. Yeah. You okay. Know? Cause I couldn't sing, you know. Yeah. We, 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 we know that. <laughs> yeah, I tried singing because one day the teacher saw me, Miss Dalton, she see me with her scissors. Cause them say, if you cut out, well, your tonsil, it make you sing like a bird. I see me in the mirror. You know the back road, it's in the back. So what am I doing? So I okay. the time so because I want to sing. Because Ma said, come to the same school, you know. Ma said, Griffith? Yeah, all of us was in the same class coming up. So they were singers. Oh, wow. So I couldn't sing, so I danced. So that's a star-studded school. Yeah, man. what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> Freddie McKay was there, too. You oh, know, the God. techniques. All of yeah. the techniques was there, too. So it's a school of stars, man. You know, oh, you know. yeah. And then when we go to all scenes now, we Greg, we up Gregory there now. OK. Yeah. And then Bonnie leave from all scenes. I went to Camperdon and I went to Kingston Senior, which is now Kingston Junior. Me and Marcia went to Kingston Junior Secondary. Mm. So your Marcia went way, way back. Yeah, man, how you mean, man? <laughs> we way back from before singing. It's Lynette, we know her as enough. Right, yes. right, name is Lynette Griffiths. The, the singing the sensation. Singing, yeah. Lynette. Yes, <laughs> you know. The Marcia came in after she break um, 1964 uh, Carib Theater with Byron Lee. Okay. And, and speaking of Gregory now, this big celebration coming up, Kelly Price, Freddie McGregor. Yes. Um, yeah, well, you know, we had the first installment last year when we had Atlantic Star, mm -hmm. right? And this year now, we have, uh, as one of the headliners, we have Kelly Price, right? And from the local genre, we have Freddie McGregor, mm -hmm. right? And we have Package, which is a group featuring... Um, um, Jim Myers, Myers, Karen Smith, and Patricia Edwards. So you package. Get to, yeah, that's the name of the group, Package. So when you see Package, I'm wondering, who is that? It's three fantastic singers. A package of great vocalists. Right, just like we have the high trees featuring Julie Marcy and Rita. This is a yeah. version of like that, yeah, you know. And then, right. and then we have Robert Minot, you know, and um, Kay Dina, and this rising star singer magnum week um a short boss mm -hmm. you know i just met him at the um the lane at the plaque monday for the first and time and it's at the jc at the jc auditorium the you know the um the, the auditorium at jc and we're asking um people who are coming you see to to bring food clothing anything because that 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 place that burned down walk a place of safety that was one of Gregory's charities that um, we have. It's one that, of the yeah, charities? Yes, because oh, okay. he has a, quite a few charities. He has Patricia House, mm -hmm. which we give to every year, Black Harmony, and then um, St. Saint, Saint Barnabas Basic School in, in Fletcher's Land that he used to go to. So these are charities that Gregory had for years was contributing to. And so, so, you, they, so they want, so what, what, what you want people to bring again? Yes, a food item, because the one that burned down the other day is one of them, you know, mm -hmm. food, clothing, books, and they said cash, a daily take check, as long as it's not going bounce, you know, so they can donate to help the school build back that was burnt down. Okay, and that's happening on Valentine's Day yeah. at JC. At JC Auditorium. Showtime is at 7 sharp because it's Ash Wednesday, so everybody can come out early to start. Okay, so sleep all day and come out later. And come out early. It's going to be a fantastic show oh. because, I mean, Kelly Price has never been here and uh, she has promised to unleash. Tell me why. Why? Copeland Forbes. Yes, sir. Man of the moment. Thank you very much, sir, for coming and sharing with us. And I must say many thanks to all the workers in the foundation, June Isaacs, Connie Leslie. Everybody has worked hard to make this thing happen on an annual event. And we need everybody to come out and support it because it's for a special cause. Of course. All right, there you have him right here in this segment, the man himself, Copeland Forbes. Still to come right here on stage, the legendary Bonnie Jabi Whaler, and later, a Valentine's treat that you don't want to miss. Live, right here on stage. Yes, we've stolen this moment. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Legendary Bonnie Whaler is on a roll in recent time as it relates to accolades. After opening his own museum in Kingston, legacy must concern the wheelhouse. And receiving one of the nation's highest honors in October. Bonnie Whaler Livingston. 
member of the Board of Jamaica. The original whaler is now being honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award by Reggae Radio, IRFM. He comes to our stage right now to tell us about some of these awards and how he feels about so many honors in quick succession. Jabi, sir. Respect. Blessed love, sir. So how do you, how do you see this? It's, it's so many honors in, 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 um, in quick succession. One of the nation's highest honor. Your museum was opened last year. Now this Lifetime Achievement by RFM. How do you feel about all of this happening so quickly for you? Well, it's about time. Yes. I'm satisfied that it's happening within the, this dispensation of the time that we live in. And I'm focused on doing everything that is proper yes. and authorized in all of this. In your view, do you think they're coming late? Are they late in coming? Were they? Uh, do you see it that way that they were they're late in coming? And no, really, you know, not really. Time is the master, and they have done so in time, in due time. And as for the whalers, because Bunny is just a name, but the whaler is a bigger name. Yes. Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Bonnie Whaler, makes up the whalers. I'm still here doing what would have been done if those brothers were here. Okay. So you're the living represent, rep, uh, representation or representative of the whalers yes. and their work and their own contribution to the culture of Jamaica. Of, of course. And the music called reggae. Reggae music. And, and okay, so this award by IRFM, um, what would be, could I, could I ask you to preempt your acceptance speech of that award for us? <laughs> you know, when people get their award, they say a, a few words of thanks and so on. Yes. Um, can I ask you to preempt it right here on stage? <laughs> well, of course, I'll be giving thanks. Yes. For all that has been done, surviving the bunny wheeler yes. within all of this. And I'll be looking forward to things happening futuristically. Yes. And all of this is in one focus of bunny wheeler being here. Mm -hmm. Respect. How would you sum up your legacy, Jabi, if you were to write your own a statement about your legacy? How would you sum it up? <laughs> that would be a big sum up. Yes. A very large sum up, you know. And I'll be surviving by linking to my legacy as a form of existence. Mm -hmm. And I would want everyone to, you know, who knows Bonnie Whaler, to be focused on Bonnie Whaler presenting this legacy to them. Wouldn't you say your career precedes the founding of reggae itself? Weren't you a performer before reggae was born? What we call reggae, the, the beat that was created at the turn of the 60s, that we call reggae, that scare beat. Weren't you a, a performer before that? Yeah, I was, I was there from the scatterlights. Right. You know, and the scatterlights is the, are the ones that I would be focusing on. Mm -hmm putting forward this great reggae music to where it, ha it has been. And I'm still looking forward for greater things to happen mm -hmm. uh, to reggae. To the music and your own contribution, because last time you were here, you promised um, a, a box set. <laughs> the project is still being worked on? Yes, it's still putting... being worked on. Yes. Still being worked on. So it, it, we are to still look forward to that, yes, project that project coming forward in the near future, I suspect. Of course, of course. Of yeah, man, that, that will be something. And yes. that, will it be, just to ask you a few questions about what may be in it. Is it a summary of your entire body of work? Or well, is it a special it's, work on its Well, own? it's the work of the whalers. Is the, oh, yes, that, that's it. It's the work of the, the whalers. whalers. Yeah. That you will be documenting yes. in a musical yes. package. Yes. Nice. Well, we look forward to that, so I can't wait for it.
Yes, of course. And um, I, I, the promise still stands that you'll come and bring it to our stage. Yes, of course. <laughs> the early 2000s, we had the privilege of traveling to Hawaii with you, and you did some performance. And now we're going to, let's go to a little clip from it with you mashing up the place in Hawaii. This is real deal. <laughs> Why when I do Jamaica, make I don't get a curtsy wrong my neck? But check wrong my neck, you're right now in Hawaii. Big time. Little tour? Tours to me are very special. Mm -hmm. You know, because you are not called unless you can present something that the people who you have called can represent themselves within the archives of this setting. You know, that was a very good experience to have, you know, to have had. And I'm still here looking for futuristic performances that will make Bonnie Wheeler be Bonnie Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> Bournemouth Entertainment Complex, the venue at which you will be presented with this Lifetime Achievement Honor by RFM. That place holds special significance to the development of reggae. Your, your recall of, of yes, Bournemouth well, back in the day? Bournemouth, back in the days I used to go to Bournemouth to fishing, fishing and, you know, to do things that kids would do when they are not at home. Yes. And Bournemouth, to me, is a very special place. And I'm satisfied to know that I'm still here mm -hmm. attending Bournemouth Beach. And it was in the 50s, right? Yes, That's when it we was were, really kicking, yeah, that yeah. then. I think from my reading, it was back in the 50s, 60s. Yeah. That was the, the dance hall of then. It was a place where people went <coughs> to dance and to, and to live performances and dancing. And it was known for jazz music as well, for presenting yes, the jazz. Scatolites, yeah, the Scatolites used to play there. Yes. You know, and I used to attend concerts that they backed the Whalers. Myself, Bob, and Peter. So Bournemouth has been up that place that we always look forward to. And I'm now satisfied that I'm presenting this peculiar duty and responsibility that I have mm -hmm. in bringing Bournemouth to life. Oh, yeah. On this Sunday, and to achieve an, um, an honor there. <laughs> That's, that's interesting. That's very, very important. Well, you know, give thanks. I have a big up Reggae Radio, IRFM for this. Cheers to Reggae Radio. And congratulations give again, Javi. Thanks again. Like Blessed love, man. Much life. respect, as usual. All right, there you have him in this segment, the legendary Jabi Bonnie Whaler. Still to come right here on stage, a special treat for those of you celebrating Valentine. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. And now to deliver the promised treat for you and your Valentine, two of the biggest voices in Jamaica's music, Tommy T and Luke D, accompanied by Anthony Lewis on keys. Right now, right here on our stage, but first, what do you do most, all three of you, what do you do most of the time right now? All I do is sing, <laughs> sing, record. Yeah, just music in general. That's what I do. But uh, 
What about your own career? Yeah, currently artist? working on an EP mm -hmm. and to be releasing this in summer. So working on some singles right now in the studios. And you, Anthony? Yes, sir. I am currently producing. I also do a lot of live stuff, live jazz type stuff um, locally and um, tour with some artists, Jamie Cliff, Tessa and Jean, and stuff to name a few. Yes, because I heard that you are the man. <laughs> Luke D. Yeah, man. Um, talk about your own career now. Right? Yeah, I know well, you're a big recording star uh, in your own right. Apart well, from your loss to work. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, it's music right across the board. We mm. still a record, you know, we, we make songs. I mean, I mean, Jamaica is just a factory, so we make a song and we don't make it, and it it, it, it has to stay one place. We try to get it, you know, out there as well. And we still have work with Lost, so it's still music right, right across the board. We never stop with that. I'm mean, a job that. And the, the big crews, Love and Harmony, yeah, coming up. Man, Love and Harmony crews coming up, and as I say, you don't know, you go up on them thing, you want to get yourself, you know, fix up yourself, feet, are sexy, you know, so we're ready for it. Mm -hmm. And last year was. Why you were back this year? Yeah. Your performance well, last year. Yeah, can you know a show off thing we did when we go up on stage? We don't we don't rear show, we rear magic. So it's a crazy thing. We're ready for them again. All right, so the, the, the we're promising some great love songs for my audience and right, 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 their Valentine. Right. Sure. And you guys are going to do these songs for us. And I want I want to get a, a little sneak of what you will be doing, sir. Can you? Can you give me something? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not a sneaker still, you know, but I, 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 I think still. So we'll get songs like, turn down. And you? Oh, we're going to sing some songs to make you feel warm inside. <laughs> to make me feel mine. Okay. All right. You know, you know something? I am out of here. I'm out of here. I keep on falling.
and your whole world is only your case. I could offer you a warm embrace to make you feel mine. I know you haven't made your mind up yet, but I'm never to your own. And I grow cruel until the end. When you woo 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 woo. No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do to make you feel mine. Woo 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 woo. To make you feel mine.
So it's Valentine. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, man, have named you. You're so like the lady with the mystic smile. Is it only cause you're lonely they have blamed you for that Mona Lisa strangeness in your smile? Do you smile to tempt a lover, Mona Lisa? Or is this you way to hide a broken heart? Many dreams have been brought to your doorstep. They just lie there and they die there. Are you warm? Are you real, Mona Lisa? Or just a cold and lonely? Lovely work of art, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. Valentine, you want that special person. Yeah. 
sing one, I sing one, you sing one. I'm like, we're strangers. So 
I want to try and do something, you know, together. You know, I, I know you're a great singer. I'm a, I don't even know the song. Thank you. Arigato. I don't even know the song. I just want to ask this great keyboardist to just play something and 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 uh, you just sing something and I and I and I, and I, and I just I don't know what you know.
sweet is the ecstasy. I've heard them say that you're the talking town they did. And I've got to let him know you're the center of attraction. And you knock me off my feet. Tommy T, Lukey D, and Osme Lois for your Valentine. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Inviting you to join us again next week for more right here on stage and happy Valentine's, everyone. And I have got to be the screen of the moon. Open your eyes, tell me what you see. It's something burning in my soul. Open your eyes, tell me what you see. It's love. That's moving up and down You are the center of attraction You knock me off my feet Center of attraction And I just got to be the screen of the moon But who could it be? I am losing my control Every time I see you pass my way I'm going crazy every day Center of attraction me off my feet, center of attraction, and I just got to be this queen, center of attraction. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on stage always. <laughs>